Making life worth living and retirement worth having is really about how we produce a new life after struggle, after challenge, after loss of job, after loss of family members, after losses, period. What do we do? How do we handle it? What do we do to protect our lives? And openly, how do we go forward? Most people like me will look at what do I need to do to produce a better life. Other people like you might look at who do I network with to get a new job. A lot of people know how to use the schmooze that there is in this world to move themselves into different positions so that their careers go forward because we all have to make a living. We all have to live in a home. We all have to have food on the table. We all have to have cars in the driveway and openly, we all hope that the police don't mess around with our property in that way. But everyone has to market themselves in terms of their personhood, their paperwork, and their property in a way because when we invite people into our homes, they see our property. They literally look at how we live, they look at how we decorate, they look at what makes our souls sing, they look at what's important to us, they really look at who we are as individuals. I love my home in the Arts and Design District of Carmel, I lived there almost 10 years. I loved it a lot, but as I was going through loss, I lost my opportunities there. It was harder and harder to pay the higher and higher wages of that rental. And I had to make a business decision whether or not I could keep going or keep borrowing money to stay there while I was going through losses. And it was challenging. Have you ever gone through something like that where there was a job transition that impacted you so much that you really had to move? You had to move away. You had to move back. You had to do all sorts of things with your kids. You can't really say why you had to move, but you just knew that it was time to move. It was time to try a new life. It was trying to try something else in the world. It was trying to time to find new family, new friends, new social contacts, new business contacts, new opportunities in life, new careers. And some people just pick up and move out of country like I did long ago. And other people pick up and move to a different state. And sometimes people have to do that for job opportunities to keep their lives moving forward because we all have to retire at some point. We all grow old, we all get gray, we all sort of have to worry about our cellular health and what that's gonna look like in our old age. And practically, we all have to listen to people in other rooms who might not really be listening to us at all. But I'm just talking about life. You see, what I'm really talking about is whether or not we've made a life worth living in terms of the people we share our lives with, the people who celebrate our souls, the people who talk to us about God, the people who talk to us about our lives, the people who share their life with us and tell us about their children and how they're doing and how their work is going and how their life is, is doing socially, spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, physically, whatever. We've got to have those people in our lives. That's what life is about. It's about other people. It's about serving people. It's about customer service. It's about giving our all. It's about giving our best. It's about doing everything we possibly can to have a safe, productive, prosperous life. Isn't that it? My father wasn't exactly a workaholic, but he did produce for us a life worth living. We didn't have much. We didn't have lots of chips. We didn't have lots of cookies. We didn't have lots of extras in terms of food, but we always ate healthily and we always ate well. And openly into his retirement, he was able to do a lot more for us because his investments paid off. And openly, that was the generosity of his will. Interestingly enough, his name was Willis. And I think that's fascinating that Willis left a will. What about you? What are you doing for your offspring? What are you doing for your life? What are you doing to make your retirement years enjoyable? Have you planned your travel trips? Have you set aside money for that RV? Have you literally put aside money for the smaller home? Are you ready to downsize? Are you ready to get rid of shit you don't need anymore in your life? And openly, what are you going to do with all your collections of your life? Who are you going to give them to your children? What are you going to put them on their name on them? Because you want to start doing that now while your mind is sharp. You want to start really thinking about, do I really need this item? Could I actually give this over to a poor church that needs to give to poor people? Do I need to keep all these items? Could I sell them for profit? Could I sell them on eBay? Could I sell them to, to half price books, God forbid? Or could you sell them someplace where you get more money for them? That's one of the challenges when we lose our jobs is that when we lose our jobs and we can't find a new job or even a bridge job that doesn't pay enough of the bills, we literally have to start Start thinking about the property we have and how to sell it. One of the challenges is that it's not easy to put on a garage sale because you know it's never hit or miss, it's always hit or miss about the weather and whether or not anybody will show up based on our signage that's allowed or not allowed in our subdivisions. We've got these wonderful no solicitation signs in so many subdivisions around the committee. I sit there and wonder, do these people not realize that every single one of us has a job and every single one of us has to make money based on a sale that's going on? Isn't that the truth? No matter what the industry is, a sale is producing our lives. And when we lose the rights to those opportunities in terms of job employment or our businesses, we have to sell something in order to produce a life. That is the ways of old. I mean, literally, we'd still be in burlap and living in caves if someone didn't sell people on getting out of the mountains, getting out of the dinosaur age and 
literally putting clothes on our body and roofs over our heads and literally moving ourselves through into the 20th and 21st centuries and openly into this incredibly technological savvy word world where we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on cell phones, iPhones, and every other little technology advancement that is voyeuring on our life. Literally producing technology that is allowed to decide whether or not they're going to allow our technology fees that we pay for to actually produce the results that we are expecting to get from utilizing that technology. Something I find fascinating is that all these technology companies don't have to prove themselves under anything exactly that they're providing our services. And that's something that I think we really need to look at in this world is whether or not our technology companies are actually giving us the service that we require. The internet is sort of an invisible technology. We never know exactly who's online. We never know exactly when they're online, but the technology companies do. They know who's looking at us. They know how to sell us stuff. They sell us stuff all day long, but are they really giving us what we've purchased? That's a really interesting question. Now, I'm just a guy who likes to put out intellectual thought. I like to observe things. I like to make statements about what I'm observing, and they may or may not be 100% perfect in terms of their research, but openly, that's what opinions are. That's what storytellers do. That's what columnists talk about is things that are out there in the world. And openly, that's what I'm trying to produce for myself is an opportunity online in a radio show, in podcasting, in audio casting, or whatever that would allow me to have a life worth living and retirement worth having, but for more importantly, at this moment in my life, a home in which to live in. And literally a roof over my head and food on the table. That's what I'm talking about, people, is putting roofs over our heads and food on the table and helping people who are in the struggles of their life for whatever reason they literally might be there to get through. That's what good people of the Lord do. That's what good community citizens do. And that's openly what our services and our agencies are supposed to be doing. Marketing a business practice is supposed to be able to be successful online. Marketing ourselves in LinkedIn and other professional resource networks is supposed to produce for us a new job. But what if they don't? What happens to our lives? I can tell you precisely what happens to a life when technology fails them, when your internet doesn't work all the time, when you have difficulty getting online, when someone is pushing you offline, when every time you try to go to a public place for Wi-Fi, they want you to pay for something. And hopefully we should, but there's also a point where we run out of money if we don't get that job, if we don't win that client, if we don't earn the right in the way that technology impacts our ability to earn. You see, it's not necessarily that we don't know people, it's that it just might be possible that our technology and communication tools are not actually functioning the way they're supposed to. And that could be impeding people's rights to new jobs, new employment, higher salaries, better wages, and literally a future with their families and their homes and everything that's related to how we produce an income, how we produce revenue for our lives. Now, this has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications just talking about real life often talking about the finances of our lives because it produces the retirement that we'll have when we're old, when we might be less able physically, mentally, or emotionally, or psychologically, or intellectually to manage our lives alone, which means we need offspring, we need family, we need at least, very least, money in order to live without having to work until our utterly deathbed. Now, does this make sense to you? Then please like what I'm saying. If this scares you, then maybe you need to look at your life, but don't crap all over me by not listening to me. And certainly don't unlink to me just because I'm talking about real life and what's going on for me right now. We pray that in the new year, I'll be talking and celebrating all different sorts of things that are going for me and going for you. And that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to get back to podcast interviews. I'd like to talk to people who have stories to tell about their businesses. And I'd like to help people to promote themselves, their programs, and their products. That's really what I'm about. I also have a lot of very comical ideas from having lived in homeless life of things we absolutely need for our vehicles. I've actually got an entire car design in my head that I'd love to sell to Toyota because openly I think that a car like that, that I'm gonna name after my son, is openly needed in this world for all of us to go on in life no matter what happens to our finances. So this again has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications LLC. I really appreciate the time you're taking to just listen in for the few minutes of your day to something new, something different, something odd, something wonderful perhaps, or something horrible, but it's up to you to tell me what you think and help me to keep moving myself forward in this concept of the magic and mayhem of our lives.